Now, we've all heard of the notorious thalidomide scandal, but sodium valparate, a drug prescribed to manage epilepsy for the last 50 years, has led to 20,000 babies being born disabled in the UK. Doctors knew back in 1973 it posed a risk to unborn children, but women were not told of the risks and no one has been compensated. Emma Murphy's first five children have physical and development problems as a result of a drug and Janet Williams' two sons are also both affected. Together, they formed the In Fact campaign group. I'm delighted that they both join me now and I'm also joined by Emma's MP, the Labour MP for Bury South, Christian Wakeford. Christian is co-chair of the cross-party parliamentary group on Valparate in Pregnancy and also Janet Williams, co-founder of In Fact Campaign Group. I'm going to start with the most important people on this show, and that is you two. It's, it's not the politicians. So, Emma, just tell me what happened to, to, to five of your six children. Yeah, so I was prescribed sodium valproate to control epilepsy. Um, I obviously asked questions about the risk. Um, I was always told it was safe to take. Um, I listened to midwives to the neurologist and that's what I done. Um, every pregnancy I asked the same questions and it was the case that it, it was safe and I done that um, every pregnancy um, as, the, as the children were born. Started noticing that they weren't developing, they were, there was always some, something not quite right. And then I saw Janet on the news and she was... Really? So you, so you started clicking that something wasn't right because you saw Janet on, on the news. Janet, tell me about your experience with your two boys. Well, I've got two sons in their 30s now and I started on the drug in about 83. Uh, at the time, there was no warnings on the boxes or a patient information leaflets and there was nothing. So we had no idea at all. Um, that this could do so much damage. Um, and it wasn't until after my second pregnancy, both the children had been to, to NICU and um, had gone through withdrawal. And it wasn't until we were sent to see a geneticist that we had it explained to us it was a drug that caused the damage. I'm just going to whiz round to <coughs> Christian. Emma is your con constituent. Yeah. Did you, were you made aware of this as her MP because Emma got in touch with you? Um, yeah, very much so. Uh, I mean, it was already um, a nerve-wracking day for, for me because it was the day I actually did my maiden speech. Ah. Um, but I, I met these two you know, fantastic campaigners and, and powerful women in their own right to, to hear their story and to, to actually start to get a bit of an understanding. You know, I'd never even heard of sodium valproate before. Yeah. Uh, so to, to then get an understanding that this is still going on now because uh, the warnings still aren't going on medication, and, and 20,000 uh, babies so far is, is a national scandal. Mm. I mean, one could be a mistake, but 20,000. Mm. And so, you know, on the back of that, I mean, these two had been blacklisted by the Department for Health. What? <laughs> yep, there was an email saying that uh, under no circumstances should ministers uh, meet the campaigners on the issue. Uh, so from, from that, it, you, you just start asking the questions as to why don't they want to take this seriously? Um, you know, there, there's still no redress scheme coming forward like there was for thalidomide. You know, there's so many different questions, uh, but we do now have a meeting uh, later this month. Um, but again, that's that's the starting of uh, the process. The three forward. of you have a meeting with ministers? Uh, with Maria Caulfield, yes. So with the health minister later this month. Oh, I'd love to talk to you all <laughs> after after that. <laughs> yeah. But that's thanks, that was thanks to, your, to going to see your MP and working with an MP that you've secured... A meeting now. Yeah. What What do you want at that meeting? What do you want to happen, Emma? We want the government to listen because the government knew at licensing this damage would cause to thousands of babies. This is not an issue for the NHS, which is what they keep saying. The government knew at licensing this would happen and they need to address this. What do you want to happen? What are you campaigning for, Janet? Uh, well, now we're campaigning for um, compensation. Um, we got the um, pregnancy prevention programme in place in 2018, although it, it still isn't being used as it should at the moment. 
Um, so now, um, first and foremost, these children need some sort of compensation, some sort of care plan where they can be taken care of for the rest of their life because once the parents have gone, who then takes care of them? Mm. Right. Have you got any indication that... Have you got any backers in Parliament apart from your MP, Christian? Are there, are there other people who are championing you? We've got quite a few MPs that are backing us up other than Christian. My MP, Kat Smith, she's the chair uh, of the APPG. With Christian. With Christian, yes. Uh, alongside um, Caroline Noakes and Liz Twist and a, a number of others. Mm. And it's all cross-party, so we've got quite a lot of MPs that are, are backing this up now. And uh, the Sunday Times did a big investigation mm. in, into this um, last month. Mm -hmm. Now, the Medicines and Healthcare Products Regulatory Agency, four years ago, they said you had to, mm -hmm. you had to put the information and warnings on these products. Yeah. The Sunday Times found it's, it's, it's not happening. It's not happening. The Sanofi, the drug company, put warnings on the boxes. Um, but what we're finding now is that pharmacists are actually putting labels over the warnings. So the women... So the women aren't actually seeing them. Some women are not getting the patient information leaflets in there either. Mm -hmm. um, and then the GPs are supposed to give the warnings as well, um, you know, to explain that the drug could do what switching the medication may help, trying a different medication. And a lot of women are coming back to us saying that they're not getting that either. Mm, that's me. Could you just put this into context? Just tell us, how are your children affected? What's the practical impact that it, that you take in the drug because you were recommended to so this. my five children they're all diagnosed with fetal valparate spectrum disorder um symptoms they have is autism epilepsy cerebral palsy deafness incontinence deformed feet so it is a challenge um but i'm not the only mum and dad affected there's thousands and thousands of families across the uk janet and i are the lead campaigners but there are other mm. families and this has to stop, you know, and that's why we campaign cross-party with Christian and other MPs to stop this from happening because it's a scandal, you know, this shouldn't be continuing. Not today when there is so much knowledge about this. Absolutely. You know, the 40% risk of autism. It's un unbelievable. And your own sons, tell me how they are. Yeah, both in the 30s, um, both, uh, again, with a diagnosis of fetal valproate spectrum disorder. My eldest one's um, also diagnosed with Asperger's and ADD, mm -hmm. and my youngest one's <coughs> diagnosed with um, dyspraxia, so he has a lot of speech and language problems and understanding circumstances, consequences of his actions, mm -hmm. being able to understand sequencing and speak. You know, he knows what he wants to say, but the words don't come out. Um, life is, I mean, it goes on. The, life's really difficult for mm -hmm. these kids. Uh, and without, without support, they're just not going to be able to survive. Christian, coming back to you. So the reason why I contacted you is yeah. because I saw you, you've raised this at Prime Minister's question time, uh, which is when I messaged you to so say I would love to chat about this on the show. You've, you, you're the co-chair of a cross-party parliamentary group. These mums need, they need compensation, don't they? Um, they, they do, but I, again, that's only part of what we're trying to do. I mean, the, the Cumberledge report, uh, the recommendations still aren't being en enacted on, but we need to make sure that there are no further babies uh, born like this, which is why those warnings are so implicit. But I, I just need to say that I'm so proud of the work these two have done uh, so far to, to get us to this point. Uh, to the point, you know, we're actually doing uh, a walk to, to raise funds up, <laughs> up Ben Nevis in August. Are which you? I'm clearly not looking forward to, um, but so, take it so, part myself. So, you, well, all of you, you're going to walk up <laughs> ben, ben Nevis. Mm. And how can people um, donate if they, if they want to? Is oh, there's a, a, a GoFundMe page. There is. There's a Just Giving page um, that we've set up that's on, on our website, infatuk.com. Right. Um, so people can make donations there. That's, um, that's wonderful. How do, you, how do you feel becoming campaigners? This has turned both of you into campaigners. Has it also changed your view of politics and politicians? <laughs> oh, absolutely. Um, Cross-party work, it matters. Lived experience matters and I truly believe it it makes the best campaigns and yeah. working with politicians, it, it helps. I'll just say, Gloria, when we first started this 10 years ago, we had no idea about politics, no. none whatsoever. 
Um, I mean, I'd, I'd run a support group for this previous to that, but when it comes to a trust and working with politicians, we haven't got a clue. So we've had to learn as we've been going along. Mm -hmm. but, but the people that we've worked with uh, in Westminster have been absolutely fantastic. Brilliant. And they say absolutely the same about you <laughs> too. So you're, you're the heroes of this. Um, it's been absolutely wonderful to to have you on the show and showing people the reason why we do segments like this is because it helps people to show where politicians who they normally sort of throw brickbats at but yeah. where they can actually be useful mm -hmm. we wish you and i'm sure everyone at home wishes you nothing but the best for you to achieve everything that you want to campaign come and let us know what happens after you meet with them we will thank you. you thank you so much final question to you christian you won't be thank me for it uh, <laughs> right okay Boris Johnson came under lots of pressure about parties in number 10. Keir Starmer now under lots of pressure about what's going, what, about whether he followed the rules by having a curry and a beer during the Hartlepool by-election campaign. Your thoughts briefly on that? Well, I, I, I think there's two very contextual differences, really. Uh, for one, the Prime Minister has been found guilty of breaking the law that not only did he make but he also went out in front of the TV cameras every single day of the week to remind us what those rules were and how important they were that, that they were followed. Uh, but what we're seeing with Keir is at, uh, towards the end of the day, during a by-election, and I'm sure you'll remember by-election campaigning, you, you don't stop at 10 o'clock at night, you carry on until the work is finished. You know, they stopped for some food and then went back to work. So there's a very, diff you know, a very uh, strong difference in the context. Um, but I'm confident that Keir will be found to be innocent. And then we can put it all behind us. But I think it's uh, a telling tale that you know, a, a man who's not been found guilty, not had a party, is getting more pressure than a prime minister who has been found guilty and has had numerous parties. So I, I think we need to uh, get a bit of perspective, really. Christian Wakeford. Thank you. And apologies for that, because by far the most important one, why we dedicated <laughs> much, much more time to your campaign is because it is the most important bit of our politics show today. Thank you. So thank you both. It's been a no, pleasure to meet you, you and I hope to see you both again. And Christian, thank you for bringing it to our attention.